Hi, I'm Daryl Quinn, K5DLQ, a member of the Arden Development Team. Today, we're going to be talking about VLANs. We will start by looking at our switch configuration. Port 1 is on the left and moves to port 5 on the right. Ports 1 and 2 are defined as VLAN 10. Port 1 is the local LAN port for the nanostation M2 attached to port number 2. Any device plugged into port 1 will receive an IP address from the nanostation M2. Likewise, ports 3 and 4 are defined as VLAN 20. Note that the VLAN numbers 10 and 20 are arbitrary. Port 4 is the LAN port for the rocket M5 attached to port 3. Therefore, the camera on port 4 will receive an IP address from the rocket M5. Finally, port 5 is our WAN port. We will assume that this has internet access. Next, we have configured VLAN 1 to consist of ports 2, 3, and 5. Arden uses VLAN 1 for accessing the WAN. Our last VLAN is VLAN 2. This is the VLAN that Arden uses for device-to-device -device linking or DTD linking over Ethernet. This allows us to effectively combine different bands, SSIDs, channels, and bandwidth settings onto the network. Now that we have set the stage, let's look at our first scenario. We will be following a packet coming in from our Rocket M5 that is destined for the camera on port 4. We will assume the packet is coming in over RF. As the packet comes in, the routing tables in the M5 determine that the packet is destined for a device on the same node or network. The packet is routed to the switch. Since the Arden node did not specifically tag the packet for a specific VLAN, the switch uses its default VLAN for that port, referred to as the PVID or PVID. In this case, it's VLAN 20. Next, the switch sends the packet to the other virtual port on VLAN 20, port 4. Finally, the packet is sent to the camera. Next, let's look at our second scenario. We will be forwarding a packet coming in from our nanostation M2 that is destined for a camera on port 4. We will again assume the packet is coming in over RF. As the packet comes in, the routing tables in the nanostation determine that this packet is destined for a device that we have a DTD link to. The packet is tagged for VLAN 2 and then routed to the switch. Next, the switch sends the packet to the other virtual port on VLAN 2, port 3. And then finally to the rocket M5. The rocket determines that this packet is destined for a local network device. Therefore, the VLAN tag is no longer required. The packet is sent to the switch and gets a default assignment of VLAN 20 because the node didn't tag it specifically. Next, the switch sends it to port 4. And finally, the packet is sent to the camera. We will now look at our final scenario. We will be following a packet coming in from our laptop that is destined for the internet. As the packet comes into the switch, it is tagged as VLAN 10, the default. Next, the switch sends the packet over to the other virtual port on VLAN 10, port 2, and then to the nanostation M2. The nanostation determines that this packet is destined for the WAN. Therefore, the nanostation tags the packet with VLAN 1. The packet is then sent back to the switch. Next, the switch sends it to port 5, which is also on VLAN 1. As you can see, this port is configured to untag any packets exiting the switch, so it removes the VLAN 1 tag. And finally, the packet is sent to the internet. 